Well, hi there. This is Bob Kramer. Welcome back to Kramer's Garage. Let's take a walk inside the garage and see what we're doing today. All right, in my last video, I uh, rebuilt this set of carburetors for this 1975 Honda Goldwing. So today, we're going to install these carburetors back in the bike. There they are, all ready to go. Now, um, before we start, let's take a look at uh, a couple of things. I've cleaned the top of the engine. It wasn't in too bad a shape, but uh, anyway, I've cleaned it. I kept the intake ports covered while I was while I had the carburetors off. So we'll get those uncovered. All right. I've installed new throttle cables. Here's the new throttle cables right here. Okay. Uh, the throttle cables need to be connected to the carburetors while they're being installed. I've got the uh, some of the spark plug wires up out of the way. The choke cable is up out of the way. All right, now let's take a look at uh, the intake runners. So somebody had worked on these carburetors, I believe, maybe within the last five years, and they put uh, Viton O-rings in the intake runners and those o-rings are in really good shape uh surprisingly good and it looks like the um whoever worked on it in the past glued those into place so i'm leaving them in there and reusing them i'm quite sure they will not leak This one's the pull cable, so you just need to find the uh, hole that it fits into on the bell crank. first one and then this is the this is the push cable that has to go behind the linkage and then get into its hole on the bell crank which need to get a little more slack Once the carburetors are fully in position, you will not be able to connect these cables. It has to be done while the carburetors are partially out. All right, there we go. They're both connected. Now, I can slide this in like so. 
Then I'm going to reach down from the top and get that pull cable put into its position. It's very difficult. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing or not, but there I've got the first one is in place. The pull cable. Now I got to get the push cable connected up here where it belongs. There. The uh, push cable was much easier to put in. Alright, now I can take two 10 millimeter wrenches and I can get in here and hold the nut. on the bottom and you can turn the barrel on the end of the cable there to tighten it. Don't over tighten these, they will break. That's a hollow bolt so if you crank too hard on this you will snap it off. There's what I've got. The, uh, the uh, push cable is tightened up in position. I still need to tighten the pull cable. And again, I'm holding the nut with one wrench and turning the end of the cable with the other wrench. Okay, they're both connected. Now we'll set them roughly in position. And then I'm going to go around to the other side. And uh, now I can put that dash pot cap back in place, the one that I removed for assembly. Spring and then the cap. All right, the next thing I have to do is put the air cutoff valve in place. Um, I hope you can see it. So there's a diaphragm that sits on there. If you remember, I had to uh, leave that off in order to have enough clearance to slide the carburetors in under the frame. There's the diaphragm and then the spring and then here's the cap and there's an O-ring in the cap and I've uh, secured that o-ring with a little dab of grease to hold it in place. And then we simply push the cap down on to the spring. So I just bring that first screw down just barely snug until I get the second screw in place. I need to lift the other side of the carburetors to make it straight. Make sure your 
o-rings have not slipped out of position these were glued in usually i secure them with some uh some uh, teflon grease which is pretty sticky works pretty good Come around here and again hold that up so it's somewhat straight. Make sure my drill's going there or my driver's going the right direction. And pull these outer two ones down first. Just snug. There, nothing's tight yet. Now we're going to come around to the other side. Okay, so put a thin smear of Vaseline inside the rubber boot. If the boots are really hard and and uh, stiff from age, uh, it's a good idea to warm them up with a heat gun. These ones aren't too bad. I'm, the overall condition of this bike is pretty good. Okay. So you see, I lift. I just lift the carburetors. Make sure my O-rings in place. Make sure there's no debris on the surface of the head. And then I just uh, lift my carb rack a little bit and uh, push that right in like that. All right, once those are in, I can start the screws. down. I generally use a uh, one quarter inch drive torque wrench. However, my quarter inch drive torque wrench has bit the dust. I need to get a new one or get it repaired. So I'm using a 3 8 drive beam wrench and uh, tightening these to 10 Newton meters, which is uh, about seven foot pounds. I have checked the, this uh, wrench is really old but I have checked it recently for accuracy and it seems to still be perfectly accurate. It's important to not over tighten these when you're putting a steel bolt into an aluminum thread it's important to not over tighten. All right, now I'm connecting the fuel line. There it is. I'm using the OEM style uh, fuel line clamps. All right, so then um, I've got my fuel line connected. Now I just have to tighten the clamps on the intake runners and then connect the choke cable and I believe this will be actually ready to run and do the synchronizing. All right now I want to make sure my throttle operation is good. Yep. Roll the throttle on and it bounces right back. I've got a lot of play in the throttle cable. There's a uh, cable adjustment right here. So I'm going to back that out and uh, take some of the play out of the cable here. And there's a lock nut then on that adjustment in the middle of the cable. Still too much play, so now there's another adjustment over here. There we go. There, that's about right. A little bit of play in it, not much. Alright, now I can just tighten these lock nuts on the adjusters 
and uh, connect the choke cable. Oh, yeah. The choke cable hooks into this mechanism right here. All right, when you check the connect the choke cable, make sure your choke knob is pushed all the way in. Get the cable end piece connected into the into the mechanism there, the choke mechanism. And then we loosen up this clamp. There's a clamp right here that holds the outer cable housing in place. We loosen that clamp up, set that cable housing in there. And I don't pull the pull this tight, but I uh, pull I set it like that so there's just a little bit of play in there. So you're going to pull the choke knob a fraction of an inch before it actually operates the lever. Let's try it there. So it pulled up about an eighth of an inch, and then it operates the lever. There we go. All right. Okay, so I'm going to end this video now. That's how you install your carburetors. Um, this should be about ready to run. Uh, I just need to. Well, what I'm going to do next? I'm going to I'm going to drain the uh, the old fuel out of the fuel tank. It's at least two years old. I'm going to drain that out and put fresh fuel in it before I attempt to run this. I don't want to put any of that old fuel through the carburetors that I just freshly cleaned and I'm also going to put a new fuel filter in here. So uh, anyway, uh, possibly I'll do another video on synchronizing uh, the carburetors. Uh, leave me some comments. If you want to see a video on synchronizing the carburetors, I'll do that. If nobody comments about it, um, I probably won't bother. I'm going to end this now. Uh, thanks for watching. If you're enjoying my videos, please subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up. Um, hopefully you're watching some of the videos in their full, their full uh, duration. So YouTube will smile on me. But anyway, uh, all right, stay tuned for the next video. There's going to be more, more videos on this 75 Goldwing coming.